to AWARE. We are dedicated to communicating information that inspires your positive growth and change. Are you interested in a peaceful planet? Are you interested in optimal health? Are you living with purpose? Are you enjoying your life? We realize each person can make a difference, and our mission is to empower your awareness. The choices that you make in every moment shape your life, and we encourage you to realize that you have your own answers and to always listen to your own truth. We invite you to stay aware. Hello, 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 and welcome to our part five of our series with the most amazing Lisa Nichols. What we've been speaking about has uncovered the dangers of systemic racism. And we have caused people to create uncomfortable conversations. I've been in several of them with Lisa over this series, but for me, they're so filled with enormous, enormous love. And I am so grateful that you're joining us for this, this part of the series, because what we're talking about today is what can we do to make a difference? And I'm not talking about what they can do. I'm talking about what we can do as leaders in our lives, in our communities, in our homes, in our families, in our businesses, what we can do. It goes beyond vote, which yes, that is necessary. And yes, that needs to change, but it is a daily action that you and I take that's going to make the difference. This is a people-driven movement and it is not going away. And we've talked about that because change has to continually happen. Small steps in the right direction equal huge momentous steps. And I'm very excited about what has happened and what is happening, but we're gonna create even more today. And so joining me in this incredible conversation is transformational leader, Lisa Nichols. She has been a catalyst for change and transformation for millions and millions of people, over 30 million people on her global platforms. Motivating the Masses is her incredible platform, as well as Motivating the Teen Spirit, where she has saved the lives of countless thousands of teenagers. Through her platforms, through her teachings, through her best-selling books, uh, including no matter what, an amazing book, and Abundance Now. And I'm just so grateful to just have Lisa as my friend. I am so, so, so grateful for your time because I know you are a busy lady. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm excited to be back uh, yeah. to continue this conversation. Uh, it's not a fad, you know, and it's, yeah, and it's not a us against anyone. It's a all of us together against uh, social injustice on any topics, uh, any any level. So I'm excited that you've prioritized this on your platform, that you're using your power of voice um, for good. You know, my father used to tell me when he knew that I was, I had the gift of oration early on <laughs> and I would oh, talk my wow. brother out. I would talk my brother out of his candy. I would talk my cousins out of their... He would say, Lisa, I want to I want to challenge you, Lisa, to use your powers for good. Oh, <laughs> and so this showed up I, early. I, I, yeah, see. Yeah, early. I didn't know it was there, but, but the adults in my life knew it was there. And so I just want to I want to honor you for using your power and influence for good. And um, and I'm excited to be here with you again. Well, I am grateful. I, I it's interesting you tell that story because I have. Every single time I see you speak, you do bring me to my knees. You bring me to tears because I see that orator in you and how gifted, how gifted she is. So thank you. Um, I want to just do a quick follow up from our last show. Yep. We talked about we we talked about the um, prison reform and we had a very yep. deep, beautiful conversation about that. And I promised yep our audience that I would look into some of the programs that I know are working. And I did find an amazing program that T.D. Jakes, Reverend T.D. Jakes has been running for years. It's received many, many awards, the Obama Award and many awards, and it's called Tory. And it's, it's called Texas Offenders Reentry Initiative. And I'm sure you know a little bit about it. You're shaking yeah. your head. So I'm really grateful for that. I promised that to our audience. I, I did the research. I looked up. I found it. And there are many others as well. That's just the one that I happen to have researched. Um, there's one also called Uncommon Law, and that is for 
Um, they actually provide lawyers to ensure that people who are incarcerated for any type of crime has access to a hearing, a justice, a legal system that is uh, represented. So I wanted to follow up on that piece. That was Thank super important. That. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. And so talking about leadership, Lisa, we have been in this place of immediate action through demonstrating through the shows like these, through initiatives like the, the Million Letter Movement, um, so many different things. That, I mean, and that's incredible. That's immediate action where you can actually write to mm -hmm. the police chiefs. And we talked about that in one of the series. Um, one million letters being sent to police chiefs and mayors and what can be done and around the eight can't wait. And that's really working, which is incredible. And it is. It is. And, um, and then you and I spoke about intimate cultural proximity, and that's been our conversation yeah. throughout. And you have been in a very intimate cultural proximity conversation through art recently. Yeah. And yes. I've, I'd love to hear more about this. Yeah, yeah. So ICP, I just feel like it's just, it's about to be a part of our culture. Um, and intimate cultural proximity is the concept that if we, we put ourselves connected to each other physically, it becomes very difficult for us not to have compassion for one another. Yeah. But physically, intimate, how can we do that? I mean, physically, right. meaning through... Right. Well, well, through different forms, various forms. Number one, um, allowing our, for those of us who are parents, putting our children in the proximity, finding ways. Um, I took my son, I think I shared with you, I shared with you in another show. I took my son to my girlfriend's Jewish Passover. Um, and he was nine or 10 at the time, I think. And I took them every year. And in the, in the recent years, I haven't been able to go because of my schedule. But he recently got married and he took his new bride. And I love that that has become a part of his experience. That's just who he is. And so that was intimate cultural proximity. And I know what it means. It means, well, do I go out and find a black friend that I can hang out with? Well, it means put yourself in environments where you're learning about other cultures and it's in an intimate relaxed place. It's not learning study. It's picnic when they resume. It's, it's, it, it's the, the way of worship. You can go online and look at some of the way of worship. When you're in someone's proximity and you pick up the likeness between you and them, then you can celebrate the difference that they have from you. I'll say that again. When you're around them enough, you can pick up, when you can pick up the likeness that you have with them. That when you notice that a five-year-old little black child and a five-year-old Asian child and a five-year-old Jewish child and a five-year-old child from Croatia and a five-year-old child from South Africa, they all want a little bit of candy. They all want to run and jump all day. They all respond to a hug when they fall down. They all do that. So ICP, Intimate Cultural Proximity, is my challenge to us to create programs and opportunities. They're not created yet. Some are created, they don't call it that, but this is our future. This is when we're moving from anguish, the anguish of George Floyd, the anger of George Floyd and everyone prior to George Floyd to action. I say, along with the million letter movement, along with voting, we gotta go vote. Along with all of that, in the pot, I'm gonna say throw some intimate cultural proximity because otherwise you're gonna learn about me, but you don't yet know me yet. Mm -hmm. And you and I could have this conversation. I can say anything to you that I'm feeling about this movement and be comfortable that our friendship's gonna last because I'm gonna respect you, I'm gonna honor your dignity and our love has already been established. I love your baby, your baby loves me. You know, I love your husband, your husband loves me. I'm family, I'm the extended Lisa. Yeah. And so that came from ICP. We just didn't, we didn't design it and call it that, but from our intimate cultural proximity, we've already been doing it. And so for a lot of people like you, Lisa, it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to occur, but there's a whole community of our sisters and brothers who are white that it needs to occur with so that the question marks 
can be or the assumptions or the hearsay can all be play, replaced with a first-hand experience, which, uh, by the way, will expand the compassion. It will expand the empathy. It's not going to give you life in black shoes. You'll never have that. Don't look for that. Just look for expanded compassion, expanded empathy, and that is engaged through ICP. That makes sense because, yes, I have had that with you for a long time but what we've been doing is educating and and showing through our communication and exactly. our level of connection what's exactly. possible mm -hmm. yeah. i and still so though, have to go through their own experience they have to also have their own experience and i've been really open i and i would love to ask you this question so i i was listening to an interview with trayvon martin's uh, mother and when she heard George Floyd call out to his mother, it hit her in a different way because she lost her son. And I, as a mother, feel that, but I am not ever going to say, I, I know how you feel. You know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I don't. And I... Right. Don't know what to say, Lisa. I I don't right. know what to say. Right. I really right. would love. Yeah. Right. So she she has become a friend of mine. Um, uh. She actually she actually asked me to be the leading facilitator at the first ever Mother's Healing. Now she has an organization, and she she put a conference on. You no, know, yeah, you have no idea. Uh. This was a Ooh. this was an event for mothers, all mothers who have lost a child to violence. Uh. Oh. And there, there were 50, 59 mothers there and they were mourning the loss of 62 children. Oh. And you oh. have no idea. First of all, I didn't know how I was going to navigate this. I'd never been here before. I'm not, a, I, I'm, I didn't lose my son. So I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, from my perspective, I'm going, I, I'm not a mother in mourning, I, but I, but I do facilitate healing. So I can do that for them. And when I tell you the four or five hours we spent together was the most riveting. I had every mother bring a picture of her child oh. and I had every mother. Cause I noticed at, from the very beginning, these mothers wouldn't go on and live the guilt they had living on past their children was just mm -hmm. too much to bear. So when they connected with each other, they all connected with each other. And how did your child die? That was the connection. How did they die? And immediately in the first 10 minutes of this event, I was like, whoa, this is going to be dark and heavy. And um, she and I had a powerful, I said, can I challenge you guys? And I had them begin to go around and everyone had to share a funny story of their child. Oh. And all of a sudden the room lightened. All of a sudden I said, there were so many chapters of their lives before that last chapter, before that last rude, um, disruptive, un unexpected, brutal chapter. There were so many other chapters. So for the time we're together, we're going to live in those previous chapters. Mm. So we honor them. And, uh, and it just lifted the spirit. And I walked them to, through some exercises and I said, this is not to dishonor your, your loss but it is to celebrate their life. And before it was over, I had every mother, if you can imagine this, hold up the picture to their, of their child and say, I commit to you that I will live on and honor your life by living. And then they passed it to the mother to their right. And the mother to their right said the same thing to a child that they didn't know, but they knew. And they had to do it 62 times now these women didn't cry, Ooh. Lisa. They wailed. They uh, wailed. They wailed. And so this exercise took us probably about 35, 40 minutes to do because they're crying and they had to choose to live on. And they had to choose to live on 62 times. Times. Wow. Whew, when I tell you. And so to your question, and I, I I had to tell you that so you can understand that I one I know what you I, I know how you Thank feel, you. and two I was, yeah absolutely I was I was the only woman there who hadn't lost her child, mm. right, and so I had to I had to not get consumed with guilt, yeah because I was sad for them but I wasn't sad from 
losing my child. And so number one, I would say when you're speaking to someone and you want to have compassion, and this is to everyone listening to my voice, you're speaking to someone, you want to have compassion, but you haven't had their journey. Right. Right. Then, then say, I won't get it all right. I won't get it all right because I have no idea what it's like to walk a mile or a step in your shoes. Acknowledge that. Say it up front. Say it up front. I don't know. But what I will do is I will listen with an open heart to interpret as best as I can what it must feel like to stand in your shoes. That's what I will do. I will listen with no judgment. I will listen with no pre preconceived notion. I will not try to fit your experience in my shoes. I will do the work as much as I can, as much as I can, and then be bold about it as much as I can as a white woman who hasn't had the challenge of having to overcome her skin at any wow. given time in her life. And that's the truth. Right. You know, and that's Just, where these conversations are rich because they give you some of the language. Don't try to change the language to make it yours. Borrow the language from your sister, Lisa, because I can say what we want. I, I can say what we want. We want you to say, I have no idea. I'm coming from a place as a privileged white woman. I acknowledge that on some days, I, honestly, I didn't even think about it. On other days, I now have to climb over the guilt of it. But what doesn't serve you or I is that I live in guilt. And so I'm yes. going to write that I'm going to, cause I've been saying to all of my, as you know, all my white friends, please don't park in shame and please mm. don't park in guilt because together we are more powerful. And if yes. you get sucked down, if you get sucked down that wormhole of guilt and that worm, cause it can be very, very big and that vortex can go cause it's so much noise out there that right. that's not, that's not where leaders want you to be. Not where African-American right. leaders want you to be, not where white leaders want you to be, not where brown leaders want you to be. As a leader, I want you to stand on your experience, not in your experience. Well, look what you did for the moms. I mean, they they died with Ooh. their sons, essentially, and, and daughters. And when you gave them that joy, a little joy back, yeah. That, yeah. that gives... Yeah life back and wow whoa yeah oh, yeah I, I need to, I, i'm glad you mentioned her i need to reach out to her again she's been trying to get me every year thereafter um and so i i this is a time so uh yeah. you know yeah. i wake up every morning and say i wake up every morning and say god where should i serve today and then when i see the hundred places i go okay god what are the 15 priority places to serve today <laughs> <laughs> well, we are so grateful that you're here with us and yeah. serving in this huge population as well. And Absolutely. there is, you know, there's a way that we're going to be able to connect with everyone on Facebook after these shows and get the conversations continuing, which is oh, I'm really yeah. grateful. Yes, oh, this is because it doesn't stop yeah. here. Yes. No, no, and now you're doing this. Here's the deal. It starts here. That yeah. We're doing all of this, Lisa, right. to ramp people up. This is, everyone's just been steeled in anguish, anger, frustration, defense, um, protection, shame, frustration. We're just been kind of listening and poking around. We're just about to begin. You and I and every single person that can hear our voice, we're just about to start. Good, good. Yes, it's about time. I mean, yes, <laughs> we're five days into this. I mean, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's, that's a lot of solutions have come out of this entire series and it's just been enormous. Now you have something that you've been talking about the entire time. I'm really excited about called Spinema. And I think you've heard Lisa talking about this. What is it? Why, why were you moved to do this particular piece of art? So, um, I met, so I'm a spoken word artist. Uh, I'm an under express under no, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't put that out there in, in front because I my didn't call, know that. Yeah, my calling at in transformation just has been so big and so demanding. But I'm a spoken word artist at my core, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a, to me, it's one of my best kept secrets that I, I, I'm I not. Just, yeah, I know, I know, I know, and and I love spoken word, and uh, for a long time I've wanted to do a piece across color color lines um a culturally aware piece but i didn't want to do a piece from a black person talking to white people 
I didn't want to do a talking about white people. I wanted to have this culturally aware piece um, talking to someone that was white. And, and we find out how we can connect. I've been wanting to do that for years. Um, you got to know that, you know me, I'm about unity across culture lines, across religious lines, across geographical lines, ec economic lines. I love to build bridges where walls once exist. So I love to take the wall, melt it down and build a bridge. That's just who I am. And so then everything happened around the social justice movement. I was like, okay, I can't. And I just kept saying, oh, I'm, I I'm too busy and you know, yada, yada, yada. And then when that happened, I could not sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I called my friend, Sean, who, who's in the piece with me. He, he's the white guy. He, he plays the white character. And I said, Sean, we got to do it now. And he's like, uh -huh. okay. And then I started talking about it and there's power in using your words. Cause when you start talking about something, the universe just starts conspiring on your behalf. Then we meet David Bianchi and David Bianchi is a spoken word artist. Who's actually doing spoken word. Right. And he's a producer and he produces this thing called spinema and spinema is spoken word fused with cinema. Mm. And so it's amazing. It's amazing. And so instead of just doing a piece of the camera, you're like on a set with producers and directors. And, and so we got together, David and Sean and I, and I set the tone. I want this black guy and this white guy to be, to be saying their truth. I want them to say their truth going at each other, pretty much how it is in the world, right? Everyone's right, wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong. And I want, then I want the consciousness to come up that there isn't a right wrong. There's a, your experience, my experience. Can we honor one another's experience? And can you join us to fight social injustice? This is not a black against white. And if you watch out, it can easily be turned into that, but then we're, we missed the whole point. This is mm -hmm. saying, will you join me sister? And we go for social justice and require social justice and social injustice and inequality is our enemy. Right. It's our ah, enemy. And so, ah. and so we all then went to our perspective corners and wrote verses. And oh. then we came back, right. Then we came back and I listened to their verse because I wanted to be I, my character, character, not character, but character. She's the muse. She's the voice of reason. She's the let's grow. So the piece is called let's grow. Ah. The style is called spinema, but the piece is called let's grow. And so, so you see the man, I open up and then you see the men going back and forth and they're just doing some just ugly stuff. And then I'll come in and insert, hold on. And so, and what's unique about this piece, Lisa, is that it's not written for blacks and it's not written for whites who are already conscious and in the call for social equality. What, who it's written for is white men and women who are saying, Okay, I want to be there, but I need uh, to help. so it's that it's that it's not written for to convert the races. It's not written for them because they're not gonna listen. So we're not trying to convert anyone. It's not written for those who are already in the cause and fighting the cause because you're you get it. You get something in you, you get it. We're it's the people in the middle. You know those people, they're your friends and mine. We we uh, you you just saw me present to them, and mm -hmm. they're saying, listen. Listen, my heart says something needs to be done, but I don't know what to do. I'm not wow. quite sure about all this stuff. I'm not ready to raise my fist and say Black Lives Matter. And no, oh, by the way, that's okay. Not everyone's supposed to do that. Not everyone's supposed to do that. Your journey and your action may be something different, but action is required to be on the right mm -hmm. side of history. And so we're talking to that group of people. Um, and just to give you the opening line, I know you're going to play a little something. And by the way, yes. No one has seen this. It is, <laughs> no one has seen this. No one has seen this. You're the only person that I sent it to and I made you give me a pinky promise <laughs> yes. that it will not go anywhere else. But what you don't have is the opening line and the opening line to the entire poem is, dear white sisters and brothers, committed to discover the truth. Consider this a public service announcement, curated, mm -hmm. cultivated, and create it just for you. If you're willing to be inconvenienced with the facts, be uncomfortable with the visual acts and disrupt it 
by where America is still at? Face maybe your own limiting beliefs, have maybe hard conversations that pull the veil back and acknowledge that world justice for all has never been intact. If you're willing, great, but beware. This road could be painful and filled with some hurt and even a bit of shame. Watch out. You may even be tempted to play the blame game because it's easier to stay ignorant, unaware, angry, and apart. But what if we confronted the truth within our hearts? Courageous cultural conversations. Ah, now that's a new art. That's the opening. You won't see that in the video. But <laughs> I see it in you. Oh, let's play a little yeah. of this so that you can get an idea. And truly, Lisa, like this is a behind the scenes shot. Of behind. The, behind, the, behind scenes. the scenes shot of just a piece of this conversation. We're going to play a couple of these so you can get and the let idea. Me just, let me say it's from my phone. So this is not from the main camera. This is my assistant recording in the corner. So you it's unfiltered. It's not 4D HD. It's just literally us in the corner capturing a little bit. So when you see the movie, it's movie quality. Yeah. Sorry to cut you I off. Can't. No, no, I can't wait. Yes. And it's important you say that too. This is addressing, this piece is addressing that all lives matter question. Let's take a look. Camera set. And action. Black lives matter. That's all chit chat. Y'all just want to fight. The real truth is, all lives matter. And I want to apologize for being white. Black lives don't even matter to you, or else you'd stop killing them yourself. Most blacks are killed by blacks. You don't even need the cops to help. And you say it's systemic. Yeah, they were treated bad. That was what, 400 some years ago. I didn't kill anybody. Don't you think my white skin still makes me guilty? I'm sick of you calling me racist. I don't even see color. We're all the same. You're the only racist here. Always looking for a skin tone to blame. More white people are killed by police each year. Check the stats, man. I'm speaking facts. But we don't riot, kill cops, or burn down buildings, or any other of these animal acts. All lives matter. Yeah, they do. But for all lives to matter, that has to include me and you because if black lives don't matter, all lives can't matter, dude. And your stats are PS, I'll get to that a little bit later too. Look, white folks have been winning things since before colonization. Let's take Michelangelo. Because in 1477, there were only white people painted on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Hello. And the world's been pushed to worship white since before the Renaissance because the only way that Jesus was white was if he had one. Because you're happy to watch Denzel and glorify LeBron James, and you'd love to get a selfie with Morgan Freeman because he's got a fan. That's just the beginning. That's just the start of the conversation. We have a couple more clips that I want to show you, but what was happening in that scene? So in that scene, um, it's Sean, the, who is the white character. He just, he's confronting black lives matter, like black lives matter. That's just, what, what are you saying? All lives. Cause that's the big thing. So the, the argument that's out there is if you say black lives, you're diminishing the fact that anyone else matters. And, and then you see David come back and says, yeah, all lives matter. But that means too, if black lives don't matter, then that all lives can't matter, dude. Like, so he's saying that if you treat a black life, like it doesn't matter, then all lives don't matter. Like you're not, you're saying all lives matter, but then you're treating a black life when you put your foot on his neck until he dies, you're treating that life like it doesn't matter. And so David's whole point is, yeah, all lives matter. But 
if you don't have both lives, if black lives are not treated like they matter, then all lives can't matter, dude. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's his comeback to really be addressed. And Sean did this phenomenal piece where Sean surveyed and really engaged to see what are some of the things that that white people who want to understand, but they're in the middle, they're not racist, but they're not on the Black Lives Matter. What are they saying? What's that reason why there's a there's a gap? And okay. then we literally drop those points inside of this piece Ooh. so that we could address that. And we can say, okay, well, yeah, all lies. So you'll see throughout the piece, it's about 15 minutes. Uh, so it's a cinema, it's a short film and we're addressing it and it gets pretty heated at some times and, and, and then we find our way back and it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, culmination. It, it's beautiful. I can't, there was I tears. Oh. It was tears on the set. It was tears from everybody on the set. Mm, I can imagine. I, this, I want you to see this next piece where Lisa just is like a queen and you're speaking this. Did you write this piece? I could, I could hear it. I could hear I could, your voice coming through in this piece. Yes, yes. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. Queen Lisa. Yeah. Action! When I say black lives matter, I'm not saying that brown and white lives don't. I'm a mother. If my son gets pulled over, I just want him to be just as safe as your son. That's all I want. Your life matters. Yes, it does. But did you really need for me to say that? Honestly, I didn't have to because our different neighborhoods educational system, justice system, and all of history has shown you that this is true. This is not a competition of whose life matters the most. This is a call for you, my sister, my brother, to stand up for all lives, but stand up close. Enough of the shrinking thinking like modern day racism isn't real. Evict the stinking thinking that anger is all I feel and challenge the sinking thinking that this will all be over soon and it's no big deal. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's go again right away. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. my goodness. I could feel and hear your voice yeah. coming through about the stinking thinking and about what that really means. I mean, the resonance yeah. of your presence and your compassion and your love, but your authority yeah. Yeah. comes through. What if, you, what if you were done? What if you said, I'm done defending? I didn't even know I was defending. Yes. I'm done, I'm done comparing. I'm done thinking that if I acknowledge that this wrong has been done, then it means that I'm wrong. I'm done with that. I want to challenge my stinking thinking that, that there's nothing wrong. I want to step challenge my stinking thinking that this aggression and this anger is not validated. And I didn't send you the most intense piece that I did, um, which answers the question, why are y'all so angry? Like, I answer right. that and I answer that in a very poetic piece, but I allow for the first time, Lisa, I allow myself to show my anger. I allow myself to show my anguish. And I realize that as a black woman who's in transformation and in self-help, um, I've never given myself permission to touch that type of anger in the last 20 years and definitely not publicly and definitely not in front of my white sisters and brothers. And so in this piece, once you see the final piece, you'll see, I, I gave myself permission to touch it so that you can feel it. And then I come out of it to go, I have that. And I'm, and I'm still equally as committed to us moving forward, but that's real. And so it answers the question, well, why are you angry? And so, um, there's some very riveting pieces that I didn't even want to give you today because and, and Sean reads them, the white character, he actually begins to, um, David throws him a book and tosses the book to him, says, read for yourself what happened. And Sean becomes aware of the, of the edited history. Uh, and uh. yeah, and, and, and I gotta tell you, black Americans, when they hear this, are going to be floored. You're gonna yes. be shocked. We're gonna be floored um, because it's so 
riveting. And so, um, yeah, if, if we answered the questions, why all lives matter? Why are you saying black lives matter? Um, you know, the, the whole, um, can you, what's the thinking that the, the current day thinking to go, we're right. equal. Let's stop. We're equal. Let's all, we're yeah. all, I don't, and like you started on our first interview, you said, I don't see color. Oh, okay. That's a luxury. <laughs> that's a luxury. So right. you don't see color. And I, I, I'm always in living color, right? Yes. Yes. And so, yes. So that kind of stuff yes. to go. And you, I love what you said. You said, ah, I remember you stopped me in that interview. You said, ah, I, I got it. You just educated me. And oh, you took, yeah. You took that and you put that in your backpack. Yep. And now yep. when you walk, you walk with that awareness. Will you get it wrong again? Oh. Will you say, well, yeah. yeah, but that one I've already done. Changed me and forever. Gonna, Absolutely. And I, offended. and I wasn't offended. You, you need me to help yes. you understand like we're in a partnership here and what we've done here over the last week over the last several weeks we've gotten in partnership and that's what this whole piece is about it's gonna sting this piece is going to sting it's gonna sting white people it's gonna sting people of color it's gonna sting black people but i also believe it's going to inspire you it's gonna answer some questions it's gonna clarify some things you're gonna want to watch it a, a couple of times a few times just to hear all the lyrics the lyrics are packed I mean, it's a lot of education yes, in those lyrics. Beautiful. How did that feel to you to tap huh. into that raw anger, Lise? Scary. It was scary. Yeah. It was scary because um, I didn't know if I'd come out of it. Um, mm. I had to, I call it touch the bottom of my belly. I had to touch the bottom of my belly. Um, and, and then the first line, the first line of that particular verse, it says, this is the anguish and anger of our ancestors. Their exhaustion runs through my veins. I'm tired for my great grandmother's journey. And I'm angry. I'm angry from my granddaddy's pain. This anger isn't new. I've hid it from you for years. I smile when you pass me to accommodate what you can handle. But at night, I cry their tears. Mm. Mm. And so it, it I, was scary. <laughs> I, you know, I follow you on Instagram and I watched you have a reuniting with your grandmother. And I saw that reuniting in a different way than mm. I've ever seen it. I did mm. because I saw her in a different way yes. and from what her body is dealing with now is the years and years of the pain but the life that you have given yes. her has helped her walk through that or with yes. that pain but i see it in her body yes. and 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 to and and the level of the level of um uh what's the proper word i want i want to use the proper word the level of absolute non-negotiable that we need you to have is to say why would that 91 year old woman go through something and now her grit her granddaughter has to still live with the same thing yes like unacceptable that's the unacceptable to go if we all can get there it's not a black white it's it's this progress we should be all of us going progress is required we we're able to put a man on the moon we're able to go from a rotary dial to a to a touch tone dial to a cordless dial to a cell phone we're able yeah. to go from an album an lp to uh remember we had the first things we had we had the then we went to a no we went to an eight track tape eight track tape album cd right ipod or you know remember mm -hmm. ipod and now we can we we wireless everything if we can have that kind of progress you mean to tell me we can't have social justice i know social i know equality? shame on us shame on us now let me be honest with you that's not shame on us as african americans because we're not in the place of power uh, that's where you have to own it and go, you know what? 
the, you know what? This lift is on us. This now it's not just on you. It's me with you. Cause I got to get out and vote as well as you, but this part, this part of movement is going to require you to co-pilot. This is not a follow. Yes. This is a co-pilot. Yes. yes. And I accept that. I absolutely accept that. Yeah. And I, I've started the show this way is all of us as leaders in our lives. And if, if it's in your family and you're a mother and you need to reeducate your children because it's not in the history books the right way. Yeah. If you're a business owner and you can, you can mentor, uh, if you're a white business yeah. owner, you can mentor a, a black business and go through accounting classes together, go through all of the, the proper business training. Maybe you go through it together. I didn't. Listen, and so to listen, I, run, yeah. I run a multi-million dollar business right now. I'm not saying that to brag. I have a global company because my white brothers mm. embraced me and said, ask me anything. And wow. they answered. One's in my phone right now. Pete Bissonette is in my text right now, checking on me and my family. Like I know I am the CEO I am today because older white men, I raised my hand and said, help me. Or they mm -hmm. raised their hand and said, they raised their hand and said, you got a talent, but you need to know business. Let me show you uh. business. And I was like, okay. Like they blessed me. And I, I was afraid at first. I was afraid. Cause I didn't know him. I didn't, I'm not around. I, I didn't hang around white men. You know, that's the biggest chasm gap, a black woman and a white man. I didn't hang around white men. And so I was afraid, but more than I was afraid of them, I was afraid of living a life, only a version of myself. So my uh, passion, my passion, yep. show yep. up my commitment, my conviction that outweighed my fear of being around this unknown group of people called white men. And then over the years, oh, they're my brothers from another mother. Like, yes. you know, that's the really, that's I, that, listen, that's intimate cultural proximity. I have it with them now. So that is, yeah, magic happens. Yes, that is. And so there's, I mean, there's so many things that we can do, but that's a beautiful story. And I, I mean, it comes from voting, yes, but you've also got to get into your own community and vote for what you, your own personal vote can be of using your voice. And that's what we've been talking voting, about. So voting is non-negotiable because in right. voting, you are in the conversation. If you're not voting, then you're on the sidelines complaining about the outcome. But if you are not in the position, if you're not putting yourself in positions to influence the outcome, then you have no right to complain about the outcome that was created without you. And so get in on the field. It's not enough to be in the stands. Everyone has to be on the field now, everyone more than anything right now. And it's not, again, it's not black, white, it's us against any form that doesn't feel like it's injustice. I wanna keep saying that because the color and, and, and people, those who are, who, are, who are preaching divisiveness, they want it to be, they're either preaching divisiveness because divided we're weaker right. or, they're, or they're ignorant to what is really the highest calling here. And so they're doing a low vibration conversation. So a low vibration conversation is black against white. That's a low vibration conversation. Yeah. Yeah. A low vibration conversation says every time someone says black lives matter, they're saying that yours don't. That's a low vibration conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to invite anyone who can hear my voice, hear your voice, climb the ladder to the high vibration conversation that says what we say when we say black lives matter is I don't want a, a foot or a, a knee put on your child's neck. Don't allow one to be put on mine. That's all I'm saying is please don't allow one. Don't allow my children to be in danger because of the color of their skin. Please stand with me. A high vibration conversation says things that don't look like equality for people of a particular gender preference or a gender or a social economic level, that's, un, that's uncivilized and it's unfair and we've come too far. And I know we can talk about how America started and how, how brutal it was. I know we can talk about that, but I'm interested in talking about how America moves forward. Yes. So if, yes. it was, if it was built on brutality, shame on them. Now, are you gonna be with me to change the way we operate and the way we be with each other?
It is, yes, and it is, I believe, finally all eyes are on the same page here. If somebody sees something, somebody says something now. You've got social media to prove it, which is enormous. I mean, that's how we got the video in the first place. It's the, it's the people. It's the power of the people. And we know what's right and we know what's wrong. We're human right. beings. Right, right, and so, right. And, 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 and we are the majority. We are the yes. majority. We, the people, can change this society. We, the people, can do it. And the belief factor is there, too. That is in play more than ever, is that everybody believes in this conversation. It's no yeah. longer of, oh, well, that happened to you or that happened to them. It's not. It's in now. And it is no the longer, collective meme. And it's no longer that happened back then. Right. Because mm -hmm. Trayvon yeah. Martin showed that it doesn't. George Floyd shows that it doesn't this, right. it's not back then it's not a back then thing now and so there's enough awakeness i call it the awake awake there's enough awakeness uh and enough awareness and through these little devices there's enough connectivity between us to go if we all agree to stand together for social justice and for the right to be done and the wrong to be eliminated i think we can influence something and the answer is too. we can yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I've been there. Yes, yes. Let's watch this last piece because this ties together what we're talking about. It ties together the series. It ties together beyond the series. And and uh, so just take a look here where Lisa, we're talking about bringing all of this together. There's a specific word that's used here. Take a look. There's a way that we can Yes. What a moment. Let's grow. Let's grow. Yeah. And that's the title and a of the piece. Scene right after that. Yeah, there's a beautiful piece right after that where we both walk off set and Sean's character, uh, the white guy is just sitting there and he's just perplexed because he's those books that you see, he actually opened them and he got all this awareness and that's how he was educated. And he's sitting there by himself and he's just looking at it. You can feel the weight of the world on this new awareness. Probably, Lisa, what you felt over the last few months, yeah. yes. the weight of the world, whenever those who are compassionate and open and empathetic and aware and want justice, all of a sudden you've had this veil pulled. You've had this veil pulled out. Ooh. and that rings a bell. Went, yes. Yeah, it yes. rings a bell. You got this veil pulled out and and all of a sudden you are like, "Oh my god. Now I know what do I do with that?" And the weight. So he's sitting there and his hands are in his head and he's he's just like, "Whoa." And then in the scene comes this hand, this black hand. And he looks up at him and it's the guy that he's been going back and forth with and that mm. sign that's that's the symbol of I'm not gonna leave you in this awareness by yourself. You're not alone. You won't be left alone here. And he grabs, there's just this long gaze. He looks up and then he grabs his hand and he pulls him up and they walk off together. And um, it's just beautiful. It's, um, uh, it's a very special, special piece that I'm very proud of. Um, so how I, do we know? How do we <laughs> learn about this? How do we watch it? What do we do? So, um, so yeah, like we just got through shooting like days ago. Like it's uh, like, I'm still, I'm still chanting the, the poetry at night thinking I'm preparing for it. So yeah. number one, um, I go, if, please go to my website and sign up to be on our mailing list because we're going to let it, um, be known to our community first. So you can go to, um, motivating the and just sign up to be on our mailing list. That's number one. 
Um, I, you're going to mail out about it. I know. Um, so yeah. make yeah. sure you know that, that the, um, Lisa Gar, all things Lisa Gar, um, because I'm asking 40 of my friends and I, what we're asking is for people to host watch parties, um, virtual watch parties. Uh, if they want to get a little bigger uh, and definitely watch parties with their intimate circle and then answer the uh, talk about the three questions that we're going to pose and put out there so that at the same time when we do the launch, because we're going to launch it all at the same time and have everyone kind of watch it inside of this period of time, you have all of these delicious dialogues going on. Mm -hmm. So you have daring dialogues happening all around the world. And then at the end of the film, don't click too soon, because at the end of the film, I'm going to come back and I'm going to invite you to register for courageous cultural conversations and intimate cultural proximity. Uh, I'm going to, and you, you'll register, and that will be exclusively for a nationwide, global courageous conversation that we're going to be hosting. Yeah, and it's just going to get good. And so, and then we'll be hosting these conversations. Um, uh, on an ongoing basis. And then we're going to graduate into a courageous conversation, intimate cultural proximity training. So leaders like you, leaders uh, like myself, who want to train and have conversations, because uh, I'm being bombarded with requests. I can't do them all. And the sure. people are, I can't do them all. And so if you're a leader and you want to be trained, we're actually going to do trainings after we've had this dialogue uh, for a little bit. So just know that I'm, I'm preparing in the January, you know, a few months to come start launching the training uh, for those who've been in the conversation. You have to be in the conversation first before you yes. qualify to step into the training. Can you give us an idea of the questions that we're pondering? Do you have those or is this the yeah yeah no no it's good i love it um so there are gonna be some deep questions um uh and one of the question um is uh what was revealed to you one question will be along this line what was revealed to you that cracks open even more compassion that you didn't know before ah, like good. what was revealed to you because blacks will have that experience and whites will have that experience because sean's character the white guy says some stuff i go oh my god i never knew that Right now, Sean isn't More. representing all of white America. He's just representing himself, right? Um, and there's a really great interview I did with Sean in between shots. I said, can I talk to you? And I asked him, I said, how are you doing this? How are you saying this? And he goes, because it's how I, I what I believed years ago. He goes, this isn't a character character for me. This is my, my previous thinking. Mm. He goes, he said, wow. it's hard for me to go back there. So I got great behind the scenes video wow. of that. And so I'm going to, uh, when you watch the, 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 uh, the release of it, um, we also going to trail it with some of the behind the scenes interviews. And then you're going to go into a dialogue to go, what was revealed that was shocking to you? And it cracked open some compassion, yeah. right? And then the yeah. other part is what triggered you? Okay. What, where, yeah. where, in the, where in this 15 minutes did you get defensive? Wow. Where that's going to be amazing. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be yes. good. It's going to be good. Call it out, open it. What triggers you? I, yeah. I, you know, I so appreciate just you and being here and spending this time with us and everything you represent. I know that you're being requested all over the planet <laughs> and that we actually got to see the behind the scenes footage and Heart. I love you so much and support you, you in everything you do Amen. and Thank i you. i'm not just gonna say hey are you available for the show but hey <laughs> i miss you i'm coming to the bahamas yeah. and as soon as we yeah. can fly yeah. yeah 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 absolutely and let's plan for and by the way the piece just got shot um but we are working and we're working rapid fire so um this will be released in the next six weeks like it's not gonna be in this is not like five months right. coming this is right. the next six weeks eight weeks at tops but we're more like six weeks it's gonna be out there and so um we're looking for partners that are willing to put the word out mail the word pull it out not just not just blast it that people should watch it but like get behind it and go you have to see this like this is a real yes. con real deal conversation and I'm sure you're going to be on Instagram talking about this as well. Yep. So that's also another great place. Yep. But yes. yeah, and you'll have yes. trailers. 
We're going to make trailers for the 15 minute piece. So it's pure cinema. We're going to make trailers and we're going to ask our partners to use the trailers to get people registered um, because you, you're going to have to register to watch it initially, and then we're going to okay. let it off to the world. So we want you to register to watch it initially. Um, so we have a community and then we're going to let out to the world probably a week after we let it out to everyone that's registered. So we want your people to be the first. I want you guys to be the first. So make sure when you see that register here for the let's, let's grow, uh, courageous cultural conversations, uh, yes. peace. Yeah, it's going to be free to watch. It's just, we just want to get it out there. So it's going to be good. Oh my God. That's even more amazing. That's even more yeah. amazing. Yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk with you forever, but I'm going to continue with you on this next piece of the, of the film and cultural yeah. courageous conversations. And I love you so much. And you know that, and I can't say it enough. I love you, sis. <laughs> I love you. My name, Twinsy. <laughs> my name, my Lisa, Lisa, and the sisters. We, we are the cult jam. All right. Yeah, I are. love you. <laughs> Until yeah, next sister. time, I invite you all to please stay aware. Thank you. Yeah.